Hey guys, Dr. Andre Pinesett of PremedProductivity.com here, and tonight we're talking about the question, can the MCAT compensate for a bad GPA? Now, many of you out there may be confused and unsure if it can, and you may be thinking in your mind that the only way to improve your GPA in the eyes of medical school is to take a bunch of classes. And although that is true, right, for the actual number, there's other ways to show that you're academically qualified for medical school, and that's what the MCAT can do. In terms of your GPA and improving your GPA, one thing I want you guys to recognize right off the bat is that your GPA is an average, right? It's of all the grades and all the classes you've ever taken. So it's not realistic to say if your GPA is 2.0 that all of a sudden you're gonna take two semesters worth of classes and have a 4.0, right? If it took you four years to make the GPA, how long is it gonna take you to really raise that average significantly? So it can take quite a while and quite a few classes to improve your GPA. So I think having the proper answer to this question and, and understanding how the MCAT impacts your GPA can really save you a lot of time and hassle if you don't have to take more classes. And we're gonna talk about some case scenarios and some specific GPAs and how the MCAT plays out with that later on in this video. But what I wanna introduce you to is the concept of academic aptitude. I've broken down medical school admissions into six domains that schools assess you by, and they want to make sure that in all these six domains, you're at least competent and that you excel in a few of these domains so that you're special and you stand out. They also want to make sure that you don't have any red flags or things that are, I mean, absolutely awful in any one domain that makes you underqualified. And so with these six domains, uh, one of them is academic aptitude, and the academic aptitude component is it really tells schools if you can hang in the classroom and in testing situations. And it's composed of your GPA and also your MCAT, so the two go together. And when you think about your GPA and your MCAT, I want you to think of them like a seesaw, right? So they're on each side of a seesaw, balancing out your academic aptitude. So for those of you guys who have really strong GPAs, you can afford to kind of have a lower MCAT score. And on the flip side, right, we're talking about today, if you have a bad GPA, you can raise your academic aptitude qualifications by really doing well on that MCAT. Okay. At the same time, right, we don't want red flags. So if your MCAT score is 0th percentile, even if you have a 4.0, they're going to question that GPA. Or on the flip side, if your GPA is a 1.0 and you have 100% on the MCAT, there's still going to be a discontinuity there and they won't consider you. So you want them to balance each other out, but in the median. <laughs> so <laughs> with that being said, let's go through a couple scenarios. And I'll kind of break GPAs into three categories based on what you should do from that GPA based on whether you should do the MCAT or take more classes. And the first category is for my people who have 2.8 GPAs or really less than 2.8, so 2.7 and below. So if your GPA is 2.7 or lower, can the MCAT improve that GPA and make you competitive for medical school? Absolutely not. So if you're a 2.7 or lower student, the MCAT will not save your GPA. So what you need to do is take classes either at a community college or at a university. If you're not sure which one's better for you or whether you can do a master's, check out my video on the pros and cons of a post back and other ways to improve your GPA. Um, but what you need to do if you have less than 2.7 is you need to actually enroll in some classes either at a community college or at a university or stay in your school if you can. And you need to take a bunch of classes to get your GPA upwards near 3.0. And once you're near 3.0, then what I want you to do is apply for a post back program. And the reason you need to do that is because you're not going to be able to really raise your GPA much higher quickly, and so it's more effective to do a post back program which affects your GPA differently. Again, if you're not sure how post backs work, check out my video, The Pros and Cons of a Post Back Program. So then once you're 3.0, you take the post back, and then you apply to medical school, go on from there, take the MCAT, etc. Okay? The second group of GPA, so that was 2.7 and below, the second group of GPA are my borderline GPA people. And as many of you may know, maybe some of you may not know this, medical schools have cutoffs for GPAs. And it's not anything where there's, a lot of times it's arbitrary, but they have to pick a point to where they're not gonna review applications to save themselves reviewing people who wouldn't be qualified. And so more competitive schools tend to set that around 3.5, 3.4, and you tear down from there. But I think a lot of schools kinda like round numbers, so they pick 3.5, 3.3, and 3.0. So what I say is if your GPA is like 3.4 or your GPA is 2.9, it would be in your best interest to take some classes and kind of get up over that next hump. So go from 3.4 to 3.5, go from 2.9 to 3.0, because it'll put you in contention at a bunch of schools you otherwise would not have been considered at. So that's the borderline group, 2.9 and 3.4. If you're in this group, take a couple extra classes, get over that hump, and then dominate the MCAT, and you're going to be in a great position. So if you're a 2.9 student, Instead of thinking you have to raise your GPA to 3.5, that'd take too long. 
just raise it to 3.0, get above that mark, either do a post back or just apply outright if you can get an outstanding score on the MCAT because you'll be able to raise that 3.0 to a competitive level for a lot of schools. Okay, so that's the borderline group. The third group of GPAs are my people who have those mid-range or high GPAs. So if you're a person and your GPA is somewhat suspect, right? You're, oh my gosh, I'm a 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, right? You're right on that cusp. You're right there. I don't think it's worth it for you to try to waste your time taking classes. Because your GPA is high enough, it's going to be really hard to bump that average, and you're not going to get much of a kick from it. Instead, you're better off focusing your energies on dominating the MCAT and blowing that thing out of the water and showing them that you can hang academically. That will put you in a very competitive class of people if you can do well on the MCAT. Right? So those are the three groups. Um, if you're watching this, right, you either have a poor GPA, and if, and if you have a poor GPA, you want to improve that either in classes or if you're in that group I talked about where you can just take the MCAT, then you're going to want to take the MCAT, and I can help you out, guys. I actually have two courses that are phenomenal for this. The first course is the five pillars of studying less and getting better grades. You'll see a link right below in the comment box uh, where you can check out that course. In this course, it's five pillars, and each pillar builds on each other to make you the complete student. And <laughs> what is studying like after this class? It's amazing. It's stress-free. It's focused. It's what you want it to be. And I can't say it great, but one of the students left a comment in our private Facebook group, and I thought it perfectly summed it up. He was saying he felt really grateful because <laughs> he had taken my course less than a month ago, and he was saying how he got 100% on his bio test. And this test was supposed to be very, very hard, and the average on the test was 70%. But the cool thing he was saying was, is that he only studied seven hours for that exam and he blew the average away. So he was achieving that studying less and getting better grades and it was freeing him up to really enjoy the semester more. And he was saying how he was, you know, before was dread, dreading going to tests because he was unsure. And then after taking the course and after having that success, he can't wait for the next test to get that great result in a minimal amount of time. That's for my people who need to prove their GPA in classes. That's the class for you. For my other cats, right, and for all of you guys, if you want to do well in the MCAT, if you want to get the highest score possible for you, you need to enroll in my class, How to Dominate the MCAT Without an Expensive Prep Class. This course is amazing, and it's only $99. And for that $99, all the confusion, all the stress, all the doubt you have about whether you can perform on the MCAT will go poof, gone. Because you will know you have a concrete plan that is perfectly feasible, perfectly doable, that allows you to sleep regular hours, allows you to study a lot more than you would have otherwise, and allows, it turns, as one student said, it turns every passage you take into pure study gold. That's what my course does for you. So you can go through and feel like you're going to murder the MCAT. That's what this course is for. I advise you to check that out. It's also in the comment box. There's a link right there. Get both courses, double your pleasure, double your fun, and become a complete student. So thank you guys as always. Dr. Andre Pineset, the pre-med productivity expert. If you don't know the website, it's www.premedproductivity.com. And don't forget to follow me on my social media. If you're watching this video, that means you're on my YouTube channel. If you're on my YouTube channel, get on here, subscribe, and click that little bell that's the notifications tab, because I like to go live every Wednesday at 6.30 on YouTube, answering your questions, giving you guys the information you need. Everyone have a good day. I am out.